May the peace, blessings, and mercy of God be upon you. The pyramids of Giza are one of the structures that have baffled scientists and researchers for many centuries. Especially the Great Pyramid. The Pyramid of Khufu consists of 2,300,000 stones. And these stones are so heavy that the weight of one of them exceeds 70 tons. At the same time, the height of the pyramid is very high, 150 meters. I know that most of us do not like the language of numbers. But these numbers are really staggering. How did these immobile pharaohs manage to lift heavy stones in this way to such a high altitude? This task is difficult for us in the current era. Even with modern technology, equipment and construction methods. How come people, more than 4,000 years ago, came to build this huge facility and they did not have technology, equipment or anything? And all who had, a set of simple metal tools and some wood. And the strangest of all is how these people were, able to fix the stones of the pyramid on top of each other. Without any cement or adhesive materials. The answer to this question is one of two things. Either they receive help from the jinn, or they were able to reach a specific method of building that does not need modern technology or complex tools. But a very simple method, and because of its simplicity, did not come to anyone's mind. Welcome. I am Muhammad Saleh, and in this episode of Science Solve a Question Baffling Us, we will answer the question of how are the pharaohs, they built the pyramids, and before we start, if you are still new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell so that our videos will reach you first. The topic of how the pharaohs built these pyramids has a wide range of theories. Some of them are completely unacceptable, others are acceptable, and some are somewhat funny. Like, for example, one of the hypotheses has become the idea that those who built these pyramids are aliens. Yes, exactly that. Although the topic appears to be a funny thing for some, it is already widespread in a group of studies and research regarding this topic. And a large number of people fully believe that the aliens are the ones who built the pyramids. But of course, this talk is not logical at all and just a hypothesis and among the strange things also that are prevalent in the minds of some people is their belief that the pharaohs were giants and their bodies were long. Something like the giants in Attack on Titan. Therefore, giant people like these, it is easy for them to lift stones with their hands and move them from one place to another and simply build the pyramid. And not far away, they were throwing stones at each other. Of course, this is not true. The pharaohs were neither giants nor giants, nor any such thinking. And their lengths in the sentence were very normal. This is evidence that the bodies of the mummies of the pharaohs who are in the museums are not huge and not as many people think, but they are the size of any other human being. Also, if we look at their coffins that are in cemeteries and museums, or even inside the pyramids themselves, we will find that the sizes of the coffins are very normal and they are not as huge as many people think. Thus, the pharaohs dot had their bodies like our bodies, but without the room in. The traditional story about how the pharaohs built the pyramids, which they told us when we were young, is that they transported these stones from southern Egypt, brought them to the site of the current pyramid, and transported two million tons of stones, during this huge distance, anyway. Finally, they made an earthen berm around the pyramid. And then they dragged these huge stones on him, over a cylindrical roller, and pulled them with ropes through oxen and workers, and he hoped they built the pyramids, and although the story passed us unnoticed, but we need to stand there for a while. Scientifically first, in order for this method to breathe, this earthen jacket must be reinforced concrete. Because it is impossible for a cover made of earth to bear the weight of 70 tons, it simply moves on it, and it will fall and collapse, and also the wooden wheels will not bear these loads either, and we need at least steel wheels that are very strong, because we are talking about 70 tons and therefore the method of wood wheels and earthen curtains and empty talk this is all not logical. Even if we assume that they won this way in terms of the size of the earthen cover that he tells us about, it must be ten times the size of the pyramid. And some thinkers say that the construction of this giant earthen berm and the construction of these terrifying roads around the pyramid and after that remove them without having any effect after that. This is an achievement that exceeds the achievement of the pyramid itself. Scientifically, it is impossible to remove the barrier and these giant roads without leaving any trace of them. And we really didn't find any trace of her until today. And this makes the whole story incorrect. Some of the hypotheses that have emerged recently in an attempt to support the previous theory are that there are researchers who have guessed that the pharaohs, while pulling the stones above this wooden roller, were spraying water on it. This will facilitate the 
movement of the wheels and will reduce the force they need in order to move these stones almost to the half. As for the point that says how the pharaohs moved 2 million huge stones from southern Egypt to its current location in Giza, the researchers suggest that the desert area in which the pyramid is located was a riverine area, and there were multiple channels and branches of the Nile in it. Therefore, they transported these stones through water. But of course, in the end, all are attempts to justify the previous method, as we said. But with all this, the method is still not logical at all. It contains many questions that do not have any answers. The most important of these questions is how did they lift these huge stones to such great heights without any cranes, planes or modern equipment? But of course, nobody answered. Did the pharaohs, for example, have a device that would make them cancel gravity in a specific area? So they lift the stones easily and pharaoh hop comes once to the top of the stone in its place. Unfortunately, there is no evidence for this. Let's move quickly to another point. How do the stones of the pyramid lie in each other? Without the use of cement materials? And the answer they told us was a long time ago too. They fixed the stones on top of each other by what is called a vacuum. Which simply means that they put two stones on top of each other and start in some way, they empty the air buttons that are between the two stones. Thus, the stones begin to be fixed on top of each other. As if there is an adhesive substance present between them, but there is also no evidence of this and it is all just speculation because the issue of degassing the air itself requires advanced techniques. One of the most amazing things about the pyramids is how the surfaces of the stones are leveled with such great precision. The stones of the pyramid are in the form of cubes, parallelopipeds and rectangles of regular shape and these cubes are supposed to be carved. Imagine also that this carving is done with primitive equipment and simple tools, which in itself is considered a suicide operation, leveling the surface of two million stones, a subject that requires imaginary effort and unauthorized labor it is normal, so the idea of carving rocks is also not logical at all, and this is how almost the methods and hypotheses that we have heard so far, none of them are correct. Okay, bye. Shall we continue? What would your reaction be if I told you that the rock cubes from which the pyramid was built were poured into place exactly as we pour regular concrete? And that these rocks are not bent or anything? This was said by the Swiss von Danken and the Frenchman Joseph Davidowitz, both of whom said that the pharaohs at the time knew how to make a specific mixture which would be artificial rock that was more solid than the concrete we use today and this mixture was clay, some chemicals that were heated and the mixture when it dries, it looks like natural rock and it can last for thousands of years. And imagine also that by using this easy hypothesis, we will solve all the problems that we were facing with all the previous hypotheses. We will need to cut rocks and carve rocks with high precision. We won't need to move rocks over huge distances. We wouldn't even need to lift rocks to all that greater height. This is a need, but how did these scientists reach this theory, how, where did this topic start? The beginning was that there was a group of scientists searching for a secret room inside the pyramid and they exposed the entire pyramid to a group of rays and suddenly they noticed that the devices gave them conflicting and illogical results, even though the devices were intact and there was no malfunction and the only explanation for what happened was that the rocks belonged to it. The pyramid contains a very large amount of water. Scientifically, this amount of water cannot be found in natural rocks. And this is what made them tend to the idea that these rocks are manufactured or rocks that have been built. Then Joseph came to do a practical experiment that he tried to come up with a mixture similar to this mixture. And the experiment succeeded and he obtained positive results and indeed he was able to make rocks of these sizes and also sticky to each other and currently those in charge of the research are trying to reach the composition of the mixture that the pharaohs used and they say that the secret of this mixture is one of the many secrets that the pharaohs knew as they did they were knowledgeable in astronomy, chemistry and mummification. Meaning from the other, that the rocks of the pyramids were a substance similar to cement concrete, a liquid that was poured into empty rectangular molds, and when it dries, it remains coherent and symmetrical rocks, and this is the way in which they built this great edifice, and they are not far away they also used it in other buildings, such as temples and huge statues. I mean, they were not lifting stones to move them, but they were already pouring them into molds. Of course, we do not say that this hypothesis of casting is the sure way that the pharaohs used to build the pyramids. But we say that this is to some extent the most logical and acceptable hypothesis and it is possible that one day another theory will appear that clarifies the issue more and more. 
Finally, no one denies that the pharaohs reached a degree of knowledge in some fields that we could not reach until today. This is despite the progress and modern technology that we possess. And that's why we'll answer today's question, how did the pharaohs build the pyramids? And, as usual, if there is a question that confuses you at night or during the day, while you are lying on the bed and do not know how to sleep, write it to us in the comments so that we can answer it. If you like the video, don't forget to like and share. And the people who see us for the first time, like and activate the bell so that our videos will reach you first. I see you next episode.